Hi guys, I'm Zach Diamanti for Kindlepreneur, and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how to format your book using Microsoft Word. It can get a little tricky in spots, and Microsoft Word does have its limitations, but if you follow these steps, by the end of this video you should be able to make a professional looking paperback book. But before we begin, a quick note on Microsoft Word. If you notice that this word looks a little different than yours, no worries. Depending on what version you have, you may find that the location of a few steps are not quite the same. However, you can locate what version you have by going to Word, About Word, and you can see your version number right there. Then you may have to do a little Google search with your version to find the exact locations of some things discussed, but usually they're really close. So with that out of the way, we're going to cover four main areas to turn your manuscript into a book. The first is preparing your document for formatting. Second, we'll talk about applying the right formatting settings, including page size, margins, line spacing and indentation, chapter styles and page numbers, and even header styles. Third, we'll be checking and improving your book with formatting rules. And finally, we'll be talking about advanced capabilities. Now, in our previous video on how to write a book in Word, we created a manuscript using text from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. You'll notice that we already have a title page, copyright page, and a table of contents. We won't go into details on these individual pages and all the other possible types of pages you could add to a book, but we do have other videos on the channel that show you how to not only write them, but format those pages specifically, since each are handled differently. The first thing we want to do is make sure the text goes all the way to the right of the page. As you can see, we have all these spaces on the right and we'd like to negate that. There are two settings we can apply, justification and or hyphenations. To add one or both of these, just select your text, go to the Home tab, and under the Paragraph Alignment section, select the Justify button. To make sure you have your hyphenations on or off, Go to your Layout tab and select Hyphenations and choose whether you want None, Automatic, or Manual. Now that we have our document looking better, let's look at layouts and viewing options for formatting. To help us see the overall look while formatting, it's nice to set up the view so we can see multiple pages and how they look all at once. You can do this by going to the View tab and selecting Multiple Pages. You can also zoom your document in and out to either see more or less pages. It's also nice to have the navigation on the left so we can see the different sections as well. To do this, just select the navigation pane box. If you use header styles for the different chapters or pages, the pages and page names will show up automatically. But if you don't know what that is, don't worry, we'll cover that in a bit. Next, let's make sure each different section type and chapter ends with a page break. This is important because as we make changes to formatting, changes in previous chapters won't break or affect sections or chapters later in the book. And that's important because it'll make it so we won't undo all the hard work we've already done by making changes later. All right, we've got it all laid out and prepared. Let's start applying the right formatting settings to our manuscript. Picking the right page size for your book is an important piece and really comes down to the style of book you're writing. Here are some of the most popular page sizes that are accepted by online stores like Amazon. And don't worry, I've got a link to this page in the video description. But for the purposes of this video, we will be using one of the more popular paperback dimensions for fiction books. 5 by 8. It's actually the same size I use for all my books. To change your page size, go to Layout, then to Margin, then to Custom Margins. Depending on what version of Word you have, yours may look slightly different. But with this version, we are then going to select Page Setup. From here, we can see some of the most common printing sizes, and if we select Manage Custom Sizes, we can go in and insert our 5 by 8 size. Now that we have the right page size, we need to set up our margins. But when it comes to margins, there are a couple of things we need to keep in mind. Open up any physical book in your collection, and you'll notice that the size of the outside margin is different from the size of the inside margin. Furthermore, the appropriate margin size we should use on each depends on the number of pages in your book. This has to do with the way books are constructed. The larger the page count, 
the easier it is for words to hide behind the bend of the page. So to figure out the potential margins we should use, we head back to KDP to see what they typically recommend when it comes to our page count. However, we suggest using these numbers as a starting point and then adjust to whatever you think fits and looks the best. Based on our book, KDP suggests we go with 0.375 inside and 0.25 outside. To change our margins, go to the Layout tab and select Margins, and then Custom Margins. From here, we want to select Mirror Margins under the Pages section. This allows us to see our margins in a left page, right page view, just like opening a physical copy of a book. Going off the KDP guidelines, we start with an inside margin of 0.375 and an outside of 0.25. After applying this to the entire document, you can see that those margins are a bit too small. So let's adjust them just a little bit to an inside margin of 0.375 and an outside of 0.35. Now we've got our margins set, but we clearly need to make some adjustments for our line spacing because this is super important for the readability of our book. When setting your line spacing, a typical rule of thumb is to aim for around 30 lines per page. Depending on the style of book, that can change. So feel free to mess around and see what feels the best for you. To show you the importance of line spacing, we're first going to select all our text. On a Mac, that shortcut is Command-A, and on a PC, it's Control-A. Let's set our spacing to a single line. As you can see, there is a very tight feel, and that makes it look almost like your typical college essay. If we up that to 1.5, it gives us a bit too much space, and still doesn't quite feel right. So let's try something in the middle, and try line spacing at 15. Now, our text has a little room to breathe, but not too much that our pages are dragging on. After adjusting these things, you'll notice there's additional space between each of our paragraphs that isn't necessary. To change that, we're going to make sure all our text is selected again, go to our line settings, and under spacing before and after, we're going to select zero. Now all that extra space is gone, and you have a much cleaner looking text. For indentation, the most common mistake we see authors make is just hitting the tab button before a paragraph or hitting the space bar multiple times. This can lead to an inconsistent indentation throughout your book and later on can cause serious spacing issues in the formatting. So avoid using your tab button or the space bar for your indentations at all costs. Let me show you the right way to set them up and go to our line spacing settings again. Under indentation, we're going to choose first line and let's just see what 0.5 does for us. As you can see, this isn't too bad. However, it could be a little less aggressive. So instead of 0.5, let's try 0.3. With that, we are able to easily see each of the paragraphs, but not have too much of an indentation that your book looks or feels amateur. The whole purpose of indentations is to make it easier for the reader to track along from paragraph to paragraph. Next up, chapter styles and page numbers. The easiest way to quickly track all of your chapter headings and ensure that they're the same is to use the styles feature. If we highlight our chapter one text and go to our styles pane, we can select new style. Name our style chapter heading example and then select the font we want. We can give it a little bit of a bigger font and adjust the spacing around the font. As you can see from the previewer here, giving our chapter a little bit of space helps our eyes get a little bit of a break in between. When you're done editing, you can click OK and your chapter style will be saved in your style selector board. We can then find any of the remaining chapters in the book in our navigation pane and quickly adjust them to all look the same. To set our page numbers, we go up to our Insert tab and then Page Numbers. We're going to set our position to bottom of page, Alignment Center, and make sure that Show Number on First Page is not selected. If you had a specific page number you wanted your count to start on, you can select Format and choose which page to start on. Double-clicking on the page numbers, you can edit their text style and size. 
Just remember that whatever you do to an odd number might not translate over to your even number pages, so you might have to do this twice. When setting up headers, we can simply double click on the top of our page to bring up the header settings. Here we want to write out the name of the book, but we don't want this to appear on every single page throughout the book. So we need to select the box that says different odd and even pages. On our even pages, we can put our author name to be included instead. Okay, now that we have our basic formatting settings, let's go over some of the things that we need to check and fix throughout our document. First, go through each chapter, and for the first line in the beginning of each chapter, or each scene break, and remove the indentation. You can do this by clicking Control tab for PC, otherwise you can click Delete. Second, now that we have those corrected, we need to look for widows and orphans. In formatting, widows are where the last sentence of a paragraph appears by itself on a new page. An orphan is where the first sentence of a paragraph appears by itself on the last line of a page. Word does have an automatic system for correcting them, but it doesn't look great. Let's turn it off and show you how to correct it. First, go to your Home tab and select the Line and Paragraph Spacing button, and go to the Line and Page Breaks tab. Make sure we deselect Widow slash Orphan control and click OK. Now, as you can see here, the end of the chapter has the remainder of a sentence all by itself on this page, and it doesn't really look great. A clever workaround for this is selecting the content on the page before and adjusting the line height by the smallest amount until that particular line is applied to the last page. After that, check over your document for any more of those to fix. Now that everything is set, you need to ensure you've ended with an even number of pages, because this is required by most printing companies. If you have an odd number of pages, you'll need to add a page, perhaps a blank page, before you're about the author or somewhere else in the document. And finally, you'll need to export your doc as PDF to upload to the different marketplaces like KDP. All of this gives us a proper looking book that markets such as Amazon and others will accept. And if you're only looking to make one book or you're okay with something very basic like this, Word should work just fine for you. But the reality is there's so much more an author can do to make their book look that much more unique and even more professional. In fact, I personally format all my books in Atticus. Using a software like Atticus, you can just drag and drop your Word file into it. And if you have the chapters broken up using line breaks and styling themes, like we discussed in our last video on how to write a book in Word, Atticus will automatically separate it into the different chapters with names. Then it's easy to select professional looking themes from templates or even design your own. You can use full bleed images and create books that look like these. You really don't need to be techie, and really, Atticus is much easier to use than Word for formatting. You can easily select and change your chapter headings, how your paragraphs will look, add custom ornamental breaks to make your book look that much more unique, choose print settings, and select from a large amount of trim sizes built in. And one of the coolest parts is you can select to see how your book will look on different devices, and with a click of a button, you can export it for paperback and ebook, thus saving you time and effort. Regardless, you now have a process to format your book using Microsoft Word, as well as another much simpler option if you choose to go with it. And now that you got your formatted file, make sure to check out one of our recent videos on how to upload your book to Amazon for the best results. And with that, I'll see you in the next one, ever onward.